Uh, I'm Dr. Ellis, Ellis Clinic. We're going to talk about scheduled awards. Uh, go to ellisclinic.com, ellisclinic.com. I have a bunch of information handouts. Uh, this one will be on scheduled awards or impairment ratings or compensation and how to, how to get a scheduled award, what to do, and is it worth the trouble. Uh, a scheduled award is compensation for a loss of use of a member. If you have an amputated finger or something, that pays for that, or a loss of use of a member. Uh, so let's say that you uh, have an injured shoulder and it's 20% impairment of the upper extremity. So what does that mean in money and how do you do it and what do you do and what happens? Uh, but let's talk about money first because that's what schedule awards are. Let's say you're making $52,000 a year. Okay, now the award rate is going to be part of your weekly salary. Well, $52,000 a week equals a weekly salary of $1,000. That's a week. Now, the award, award rate or the impairment rate, if you've got dependents, it's 75% of your weekly salary. Non-dependents, 67. So 75% of 1,000 equals $750. That's your award rate. Award rate. Now, an arm, an extremity, is worth 312 weeks. Don't worry about weeks and things like that. Let's just go through the math. So a shoulder and an arm and all the body parts of an arm is 312 weeks. Well, if you have 20% impairment of the entire upper extremity times 20%, that equals 62.4 weeks. So you would take 62.4 weeks, 62.4 weeks times 750 bucks, and that would equal $46,800 for a 20% shoulder injury. And then uh, on the on the handout, there you're going to show uh, uh, what a leg is worth, what a you know, different parts of the body's worth, how many weeks you are. So that's what weeks are. You take the weeks, your salary, and your award rate, which is 75% or 67%, and you come up with, with the number. Now, on scheduled awards, uh, it doesn't stop treatment. You can continue having treatment. Uh, you have to be at what's called maximum medical improvement, which means if we do more treatment, it's going to not make a difference. For instance, if you're going to have surgery next week, you're not at maximum medical improvement. But if you had surgery six months or a year ago, and there's nothing else to do, you're at maximum medical improvement. Although you still may get any physical therapy, you may still get medicine. And there may be, a, in the future, there might be a surgery, but you're at maximum medical improvement, MMI, and you can have a scheduled award. It doesn't change your employment. Uh, it does stop temporary total disability uh, checks. Uh, you, you're off work, or you're partially off work, and you're getting workers' comp or temporary total disability checks, it'll stop that. Uh, now, your scheduled award is going to be a weekly check also. It'll look just like a temporary total disability check. You'll have to check to see what it is. Uh, now, scheduled award ratings are free. Uh, your doctor should be get pre-approved to do the scheduled award. Uh, OWCP will pay up to 100 miles of travel for a scheduled award. Um, now, how to file it. Uh, like I said, you're at maximum medical improvement. You find a doctor that understands this book right here. This is the American Medical Association Guides Evaluation Permit, 6th edition, and it is convoluted, and it is detailed, and it is a pain. Uh, these are just the, the worksheets I have for an upper extremity, a lower extremity. I've got a drawer. We'll show an insert in a second about this. It took me six months to put that together. It's going to be hard to find doctors who know how to use this book because they, they use the first five editions, it won't work. You've got to use this book and you've got to use it exactly. The, although it's difficult, the good thing about this book, everybody's in the same boat. For instance, I rated a person's shoulder at 20% and there's a modifier of either 5 or 10%. I used a 10% modifier. The district medical advisor correctly pointed out that it should be in the lower modifier, 5%. So it's, he went from 18 to my 20 to 18 to 19. In the past, in the other five editions, 
you go 18 to 5, someone just took a piece of number out of their anatomy. But now everybody's in the same boat. Uh, and so it, it's very fair. Uh, if they send you a second opinion, then that, if the latest report applies, then, but you can always repeat your schedule order if it wasn't a fair, if the doctor didn't do a good job. You can also repeat a schedule order every year. As you get worse, let's say you get 20%, you went up to 25, you get to 5%. If you went down to 15, you don't pay anything back. So you can repeat your schedule awards every year. Uh, and, if, and if you need treatment, you can always reopen it for treatment like a surgery or anything like that. So schedule awards are easy. How do you file? A form CA-7, I'm gonna show that as an insert. You just fill in your part, check the schedule award box, take your doctor's impairment rating, attach it to the report, and send it to OWCP. And then they'll either uh, award what the doctor wrote, or they'll get a district medical advisor to review it, or they'll send you for a second opinion. Uh, you can always uh, rebut the district medical advisor report. Oh, with the new book, I found the district medical advisor became very proficient and everybody's using the book correctly, except for one area. The book has always said if you can use range of motion for impairment rating or you can use a diagnosis. The district medical advisor and second opinions were denying range of motion. Finally, it goes to the Employee Compensation Fee Award, ECAP. They said, yeah, if the book clearly says you can use one or the other. Now I've seen some district medical advisors say inconsistent range of motion and denying range of motion because it's usually higher. Now that's fraud. Do you hear me? That's fraud. You can't go back in time and use somebody else's range of motion. For instance, I had a person after surgery. The surgeon said, good range of motion. Well, of course he does this. He doesn't use the goniom or doesn't measure 18 measurements. And then later, he gets a frozen shoulder. And of course, his shoulder doesn't move as well. Uh, that's not uncommon. But for a doctor to say, you can't use the latest range of motion, it's either calling me a liar or the, a patient a liar. And that's not going to be tolerated, district medical advisors. Now, you use the latest report. Now, I think sometimes district medical advisors, maybe claims examiners, have some trouble with Ellis Clinic. I'm going to show you a map of people come from all over the United States, start in 2013, because they can't find a doctor that knows how to use to write a schedule or report. So I'm going to see the sickest patients. I'm going to have the highest rating. And so a claims examiner or district medical advisor concerned that my ratings are higher is reasonable and I would not be upset with that. But if they do that to everybody, then it's collusion. And I've seen it happen to a lot of patients from across the nation, no matter who, do what doctor did it, they send them for a second opinion, a, a district medical advisor, supervisors, agencies, every time they send a, a report to a district medical advisor, or if they send you a second opinion, that's coming out of your pocket, that's coming out of your budget. You might check into that and see if you want to pay for that. I mean, you're going for like, you know, like the 8, to eight, the 20 to 8 to 19, it was correct, it was correctly done. Was it worth the money? Uh, agencies, you need to check in to see if uh, OWCP and district medic advisors, uh, what the DMA and the second opinion doctors are getting paid. They get paid a lot more than I do, I can tell you that. But you, could, you should check into that. But anyway, you call it like it is, it is what it is, and it's the rating you see that day. And that's how you get a scheduled award. All you need to do is go to ellisclinic.com. There are a whole bunch of information to out. I mean, just a wealth of information. And this will be there, and then, you, and then you can read it and get a feel for how to file for a scheduled award.